So can you just tell us a little bit about what you've been getting up to out here in Spain? Yeah, the trip's been brilliant in terms of um, sharing best practice across both English clubs and, and Spanish clubs. Um, the first day we fortunate to go watch a first team training session at Raya Vallecano um, and then that followed up with the following two days around showing best practice with Spanish clubs such as Real Madrid, Barcelona, Sporting Hicon, um, a lot based around player care and player welfare and linking how to develop good people as well as good footballers. Um, the key message around making sure that football education is all part of plan A rather than having a plan A and plan B, it's all part of one plan. Um, and that's been really interesting to take on board different strategies that different clubs across sort of Europe take to, to do that. Um, there's also been a really good practical element, so I'm fortunate to watch Roberto Vasquez in terms of delivering his goalkeeping sessions to, to Real Madrid. Um, and fortunate also to go watch two live games, so uh, Real, Maya Honda, excuse my pronunciation, uh, in the second division who played against Malaga. Um, and also last night, Atletico versus Juve. So to immerse ourselves in the culture of Spanish football has been, been really key as well. Superb. And what are the themes, the feel that you get in from the Spanish clubs in how they do things slightly differently to England? Um, I think the main theme I'm taking away is the importance on player care in terms of building them as good people as part of the overall structure of their football development. I think sometimes in England it's very much football and then plan B, whether that's education or whether that's um, university, whereas it's very much formal education and even informal education is very much part of the player's development as a young footballer. Um, and also the other difference is around the actual coach delivery and session delivery is quite coach driven and quite coach led. Um, sometimes in England we go along the, the sort of player ownership route more and guided discovery route more, but sort of the conversations we've had it's very much uh, coach led to, to, to nail down the, the tactical competencies and what they need to win games and achieve success. Um, there's a lot of detail around the methodology of that, um, which has been interesting to sort of take on board that difference in coaching style. Okay, interesting. And um, what are the key messages or maybe specific activities you might take back to Cheltenham Town? I think one of the key messages, especially in my role as 18s manager, is taking away the word of exit strategy um, you know, rather than having an exit strategy which is a pro contract or going abroad with LFE or university I think all of that should be encompassed into one so I think in the way that I now deliver our work with our players um, will be very much encompassing it all under one umbrella as part of their development um, we, we, we do talk about our scholarship being a scholarship in life but a lot of the conversations are right if you don't get a pro what are you going to do? Well take that out of it now and it's just a, a more holistic approach to this is what you do, this is who you are, this will help you with your football, this will help you outside of here and put it all together as one. Um, and I also think sort of the other key messages around coaching and coach delivery um, can still be very much based, based around the game. I think sometimes come away from working on what the game is and, and what the game looks like. Um, so those messages, especially from clubs like Real Madrid uh, and Sporting Gijon, where everything is about the game and about preparing players for the game. Um, I think those are key messages to take back as well. Definitely. Um, Erasmus Plus is about sharing practice between country to country. Mm -hmm. What about the interactions you've had with fellow English coaches mm -hmm. and anything you've shared with each other that's of interest? Yeah, I think um, we've always had the formal sharing of best practice. We've been fortunate to have presentations from you know, Manchester United, Sheffield, uh, Sheffield United, uh, Nottingham Forest uh, and Blackburn to see uh, how they run in a formal aspect but the, the more informal conversations of you know, walking from training pitches, walking from meetings and, and really an understanding of flavour of for what they do and how they do it um, those sort of conversations I think are invaluable because ultimately we're all in the job to do the same thing which is produce players for for or produce great English players that's, that's the aim, that's what we try and do so to share those ideas of where each club are at and how each club do different things I think that's invaluable because without that sharing of best practice no one can really develop or, or get better and if we're asking our players to develop and get better, we as coaches have, have also got to invest time in ourselves to do that as well. That's a great point. And then finally, what's the best thing that's happened so far? Uh, the Atletico Juve game was, was a real highlight in terms of a, a live game and, and seeing the, the passion of the fans. Um, that, in terms of the more formal aspect, though, definitely the sharing best practice event, you know, sitting down for the, the couple of days with presentations and workshops and Q&A with Spanish coaches, English coaches, that real sharing of information and detailed information. I, I think that's uh, an invaluable way of learning and, and that's probably the key element of CPD of, of development myself that I've been able to take away.